Hi, I'm Satoshi, and in this video, I'm going to give you a high-level overview of different ways you can run a Bitcoin node. So you probably already know what a Bitcoin node is, and you might know why you'd want to run one. So the next question is, how do you actually go about doing it, especially if you're not a technical expert? The good news is there are several approachable ways to get started. And we're going to walk through some of the different options so you can choose the best way for you. There are several kinds of nodes on the Bitcoin network, but in this video, we're focusing on full nodes because that's where the real sovereignty and privacy come from. A full node will download and verify every block and transaction from the beginning of the Genesis block. Nodes will talk to other nodes, constantly checking and balancing data to form the decentralized network that enforces Bitcoin's rules. And there are two types of full nodes, an archival node and a pruned node. An archival node stores every block in Bitcoin's history, acting as the complete public record. Because it keeps everything, it can also power block explorers and help new nodes sync to the network. A pruned node will still download the full blockchain at first, and they do the same validation and relay work as an archival node. The difference is they will delete older blocks after checking them, so you get the same security with a fraction of the storage. So before you start running a Bitcoin node, it's important to think about what kind of setup fits your goals, your comfort levels, and your resources. So here's some things to consider. Hardware options. The most simple way to get started is to download the Bitcoin Knots or Core app right onto your existing laptop or home computer. This will get you started with how a node works and what your options are for running one. Your node will need to go through the initial blockchain download and most likely you will run a pruned node to save on storage and resources. But once you're synced, you can validate all of your own transactions privately. While you can run a very basic node like this on a Mac or Windows laptop, the truth of nodes is they just work better with Linux. It's more stable, efficient, and built for running background services that stay on all the time. If your current laptop can support a virtual machine, then you can create a Linux environment alongside your current laptop's operating system. This requires some technical know-how, but it's a good way to get familiar with how Bitcoin nodes work without committing to too much expensive hardware. If you want a dedicated machine for your node and don't mind spending a little bit, plug-and-play devices are a great option. These are purpose-built computers that come preloaded with custom software, usually open source, designed specifically for running Bitcoin and Bitcoin-related applications. Everything's set up out of the box, so you can just plug it in and get started. We'll go over the different options in just a moment. But if you feel like tinkering around and want to save some costs, you can do a do-it-yourself build, which will let you set up a Bitcoin node on your own hardware. Even something as small as a Raspberry Pi. You can use a mini PC or you could repurpose an old laptop. You could go bare bones with command line only Linux setups and install Bitcoin Core or NOTS manually, or you can flash a free node operating system like ones used by plug and play devices onto your machine for a more user-friendly experience. Whichever device you decide to use, you will need to make sure it meets the minimum requirements in storage, RAM, internet connection, and uptime. Node implementations. When you run a Bitcoin node, you get to choose what software it runs. And that choice is what keeps control in the hands of the users, not developers or companies. So the first and most common implementation is Bitcoin Core. It evolved from Satoshi's original software and has by far the largest development base. It's stable, reliable, and most of the network runs on it. Core is considered the reference today because it's what the vast majority of the network runs. And here's the key point. The rules of Bitcoin are defined by the software we choose to run. If enough of the economic majority moved to a different client, that would become the new reference. The power isn't locked inside Core's code base. It ultimately comes from users running their own nodes. 
Bitcoin Knots is a code fork of Core. It has mostly the same code base and follows the same consensus rules. The difference is that Knots gives you more control. By default, it's stricter about what kind of transactions it will relay, like filtering out spam or unnecessary data. And you can adjust these settings to be stricter or looser, but the main point is Knots gives node operators more options and visibility into how their node behaves. The recent spike in Knots adoption is a signal that we the people won't tolerate bad behavior on this most valuable tool for freedom and self-sovereignty. Bitcoin is too important to be treated carelessly. It deserves respect, not to be weighed down or defaced by arbitrary data and frivolous use. LeBitcoin is a completely separate and independent code base from Bitcoin Core. It can run as a full node with the same consensus rules, but it's built from smaller, reusable C++ libraries, which makes it especially useful for developers who want to build new Bitcoin applications. What I find really interesting is that LeBitcoin claims a much faster initial sync compared to other implementations. I'll admit the technical details of how they do it are a little above my head, but it seems like there's real work being done on it. And if it holds up, it could be big improvements for the space. Either way, its existence is important for Bitcoin's resilience because it adds diversity in implementations. BTCD is a full node implementation written in a code language called Go. It follows Bitcoin's consensus rules, but does not include a built-in wallet like Core does. It was designed mainly as a backend for developers who want to build Bitcoin applications in Go. BTCD shows how Bitcoin can be implemented in different programming languages, opening the door to new approaches and ideas. A notable mention here is LeBitcoin Kernel. LeBitcoin Kernel is something I find really fascinating. It's not a full node, but a really big potential project inside Bitcoin Core. The idea is to pull out the part of Core that enforces the rules, the consensus engine, and turn it into its own library, kind of like how LeBitcoin is already structured. If this could be pulled off, other teams could build new Bitcoin clients while still leaning on the same trusted foundation. That would make it safer to experiment, cut down the workload for developers, and in the end, make Bitcoin stronger by giving us more options and software that follows the same proven path. So there's more than one way to run a Bitcoin node. Some are simple, some are hands-on. All come with trade-offs. Here's a quick look at the most popular options, starting with Start9. Start9 is a company with a really strong mission and set of values. They focus heavily on helping individuals take back control of their digital lives. Their core belief is that privacy, freedom of speech, and autonomy are non-negotiable rights, and their work is rooted in removing reliance on trusted third parties. They have developed a free and open source operating system called StartOS, which lets users not only run a Bitcoin node, but also a personal home server. You can flash this free operating system onto your own hardware, you can run it as a virtual machine, or you can buy one of their plug and play devices. Once running, StartOS gives access to a curated marketplace of self-hosted apps, including Bitcoin, Lightning, Noster, password managers, communication, file storage, and more. It is very easy to use with extensive instructions and documentations, as well as a lifetime support community to ask any questions if you ever get stuck. I own one and I love it. Umbral is a personal server operating system that makes it easy to start self-hosting, whether that's running a Bitcoin node, storing your files, or just experimenting with digital sovereignty. You can flash it onto your own hardware, buy a plug and play device from their store, or even run it as a virtual machine if you're just poking around. It's designed to be accessible with a clean graphical interface and one-click installs. Their app library is massive. I counted and there are literally hundreds of apps. It's kind of overkill at times, but you can't say that they aren't ambitious. One thing I want to mention, even though these personal server platforms are super powerful, it's easy to get carried away. At the end of the day, a Bitcoin node should really just be a node. 
If you start piling on tons of extra apps, especially on lighter hardware, you run the risk of overloading your system and crashing your server. And honestly, if you're serious about self-hosting, it's probably smart to have just your Bitcoin node and a separate personal server for everything else. And whatever you do, back up your node. Seriously, you don't wanna learn that lesson the hard way. So Ronin Dojo is the team behind Samurai Wallet and Whirlpool, two of Bitcoin's most powerful privacy tools. Their mission has always been to help users reclaim their privacy through non-custodial open source software. But in April 2024, two of their core developers were arrested by U.S. authorities, charged with money laundering and unlicensed money transmission. Their crime? Writing code that never holds users' funds but empowers others to transact privately. In July of 2025, facing the threat of severe prison sentences, the developers pleaded guilty to reduce their charges. Criminalizing open source developers sets a dangerous precedent. It threatens not just Bitcoin privacy tools, but the freedom to write and share code itself. This is so wrong in so many ways and why it's so important that we stand together by running our own node, using non-custodial tools, and speaking up. Whether that's donating to defense funds, supporting policy groups, or simply reminding others that privacy is a fundamental human right. Ronin Dojo still actively maintains its node operating system, designed specifically to work with Samurai Wallet and Whirlpool. Although their hardware sales have stopped, you can still do a DIY installation on a Rock Pro 64, and they have excellent documentation on this. I have not spun up one of these nodes, but I plan to test it out. My node is a Bitcoin and Lightning node operating system that you can flash onto your own hardware or buy pre-installed. It runs Bitcoin Core by default and starts syncing the blockchain automatically when it boots up. The interface is simple, browser-based, and runs over Tor for privacy. It offers a small set of Bitcoin-only apps, no fluff, no personal server tools. My node is ideal if you want a straightforward, Bitcoin-focused setup without using the command line, but still wants some customization and control. Parman is an independent Bitcoiner who built Parma Node, a free and open source Bitcoin wallet and node computer all in one. If you have a Linux computer or server, all you have to do is run this one line of code in the command line and then follow all the instructions. There are lots of little Easter eggs along the way. And this is a great way for beginners to get used to the command line and terminal because you will learn as you go. Other than the do-it-yourself option, he can build you a personalized pre-synced node, a Bitcoin transacting laptop, a private data server, or an encrypted laptop or Raspberry Pi. He offers consultations and a full mentorship service. His website, Arm in the Parman, is packed with humorous and educational articles to get you learning more, whatever stage you're at. I highly recommend you check them out and send some senseless kindness. Nodal is a European company that makes plug and play Bitcoin node devices and also offers a cloud based option. Their goal is to help individuals and businesses run private, secure Bitcoin infrastructure without starting from scratch. If you don't want to manage hardware, Nodal Cloud offers a remote node hosted in Europe. And Nodal's been around since 2018, and it's focused on serious, reliable Bitcoin infrastructure for users who want privacy and control. The Ministry of Nodes is an Australian-based team of Stefan Levera and Keaton. The very first node I ever successfully got up and running was thanks to Keaton's tutorials. He really breaks things down step by step. They have built a brand called the Node Box. It's fully terminal and command line based, so you'll want to follow along with the instructional videos. They also offer consultations and a whole host of educational articles. This is another great resource for getting you going on your journey of self-reliance and sovereignty. So Raspi Blitz is an open source, do-it-yourself node project that you can run on a Raspberry Pi. The guides are pretty detailed and they'll show you what hardware you'll need and how to get things set up. It was actually one of my very first attempts at running a node. I tried to set up lightning on top of it and 
let's just say I crashed it. But that's part of the process. Those little failures taught me not to get discouraged because that's how you learn. Raspi Blitz keeps things simple with a basic interface, and while a Pi isn't the strongest hardware for Lightning, it's a great crash course in running a node and tough to beat. Raspi Bolt is a step-by-step -step guide for setting up a Bitcoin node on a Raspberry Pi using just the command line. The documentation's pretty great, and it walks you through the process in detail. If you keep it minimal, just a simple operating system, Bitcoin and electors, you can connect your Raspberry Pi to a Sparrow wallet and you're good to go. My own Pi has been validating transactions for years now and it's been rock solid. Raspi Bolt is a great resource to learn from and a solid complement to the other node projects out there. So those are some of your options. Whether you're running knots on your laptop, using a plug and play hardware, or building your own do it yourself setup from scratch. Running a node isn't just about verifying blocks, it's about taking back control and being part of the network you believe in. And the next step after setting up your node is just as important start transacting in Bitcoin. Maybe accept it for your work, use it to pay others. This is how we strengthen the peer-to-peer -peer network and move Bitcoin forward as real money. If this video helped you out at all, give it a like, consider subscribing, and drop a comment if you have a question or want to share how you run your node. Thanks for coming by. Have a great day. And as always, my friends, stay sovereign.